Hey there fam, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy. It's lovely to meet you. So, I'm at a point with the books that I'm currently reading where either I'm just, or I'm confused as fuck. So I still wanna geek out with you on some books and I figure we're still getting to know one another. How about we discuss Stephen King and go over my top tens for Stephen King books. So, I'm still filling in the holes, I'm still playing catch up, so we'll do the top 10 of those that I've read, and we'll do the top 10 of those I'm looking forward to reading. <laughs> Which doesn't, is it's not as many as it may sound, and eventually, at some point, I will admit to that number. <laughs> Okie dokie, now I know that this can be a topic that folks can get really passionate about so let's just keep in mind that I'm not here to poo poo on your joy so please don't poo poo on mine okay we're all fans either way right so some of us are gonna like some things and not so much on others I'm not here to disrespect you so these are my opinions and there is one thing I'm actually concerned about that I really don't want to offend anyone make anyone feel bad so I'm going to tread lightly I just ask for you to do in kind anyway moving on I mean unless you're like unless you're here out of like pure curiosity and you're considering dipping your toes in and then here we go okay so my faves so far number one I have difficulty choosing favorites so for this list number one and the nine and ten are uh, intentional as fuck and the others just will fall as they may. <laughs> it's fine. We're just gonna talk. So number one, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. No, I have not yet. I just need a minute. I'm just, I just need a minute. Number one is Lisey's story. I love this story. <laughs> And I don't want it to be ruined for me, so I haven't watched it yet. I'm looking forward to it. I really appreciate um, what I've been seeing, what folks have been saying about it, like on Twitter and such. I definitely appreciate how vague folks have remained and kept it, even though, like... Anyways. <laughs> like, I just appreciate it. I that. have hopes, but I'm just scared, and I don't... Like, my problem is, imagine if you finally get to work on a Stephen King project, right? And like all the adaptations that have, folks have been working on so, like recently have been really good, right? And then you get the stand. Like, just, you know, spoilers, we're gonna get to it. <laughs> the story was introduced to me as, hey, did you know that Stephen King's coming out with a romance? And I was like, I'm gonna read it <laughs> and then I read it like a few months after it came out and was like I get it I get it I loved it I love it so much it, Lisey's story just hits different okay it just hits different. like so many things it has to start off a bit like a Disney story right so <laughs> Lisey's husband Scott died two years ago after a 25 year marriage of the most profound and sometimes frightening intimacy Scott was an award-winning, best-selling novelist and a very complicated man. Early in their relationship before they married, Lisey had to learn from him about books and blood and bulls. Later, she understood that there was a place Scott went, a place that both terrified and healed him, that could eat him alive or give him the ideas he needed in order to live. Now it's Lisey's turn to face Scott's demons. Lisey's turn to go to Booyah Moon. That fucking name never fails to get me. Booyah. Okay, moving on. Anyway, sorry, pardon me, excuse me. Woo. What begins as a widow's efforts to sort through the papers of her celebrated husband becomes a nearly fatal journey into the darkness he inhabited. Perhaps King's most personal and powerful novel, Lisey's story is about the wellsprings of creativity, the temptations of madness, and the secret language of love. <laughs> I love it. I love that story so freaking much. 
Side note, there was a night while I was in the middle of reading it and this was like the hardback, right? Tripping balls on shroom all by myself in my bedroom. <laughs> that cover was breathing at me, fam. It was lovely. It was, that entertained me for a while. <laughs> that was an interesting night. Like the bookcase to my left was all nonfiction. It had like this Egyptian dictionary, right? And I would look over it and it was like glyphs just going up my wall. It was quite fascinating. Good times, good times. That was like one of those epiphany nights too. I was 27, it was fine. <laughs> Moving on. Number two is pure nostalgia. Like, this is a very special story for me. And I, I think it's the same for a lot of folks because this was not just our introduction to Stephen King, but part of our introduction to the horror genre, period. And that is Pet Cemetery. I still say, watch this recent pile of trash like once. One watch through, just, just, just once, just once. That it has like one, maybe two. It's, it's listen. I think that if they had just said this is heavily inspired by Stephen King's Pet Cemetery and slapped a different name on it and shit, completely different reception. <laughs> But they didn't do that, did they? Just, just once, just once. <laughs> that cat looks evil as fuck and I like it. Okay, moving on, so. <laughs> I forgot that I have it the fuck right here. So, I originally got this from a library, the Ballard Library actually in Seattle, which is not where it currently is, that's the new one. So when I got a copy of my very own, I had to get the one that was that edition. And uh, yeah, yeah, that fucking cat, dude. The Creeds, an ideal family, physician father, beautiful wife, charming little daughter, adorable infant son, close, loving, wonderfully alive. When they found the old house and enchanting grounds in rural Maine, it seemed too good to be true. <laughs> it was, for the truth was blood curling, something more horrifying than death itself and hideously more powerful. Pit Cemetery. So, <laughs> this shit scared the fucking shit out of me. Oh my goodness, first of all, I was way too young for that shit. I don't know what I was thinking. I had an itch and it scratched. And so, man, <laughs> but like, as a freaking kid, are you kidding me? That shit terrified me. Holy shit, the, oh no, Rachel. The name Rachel ruined for the rest of my life. And I've known some really nice Rachels. Rachel. It's also between that book and Dean Koontz's Night Chills that I learned of uh, different reasons for using the word pink. Yeah, I was way too young to be reading that shit. Moving on. Number three, when I was going over this, I was like, you know, it kind of is along the spectrum with number one, isn't it? I don't know. What do you think it lies? Do you agree with me? Do you see what I mean? Do you get it? or are you thinking I'm crazy? But number three is misery. I feel like numbers three and four are these stories that if anyone, whether they even know who the fuck Stephen King is or they like horror or whatever the fuck, they know these ones, right? And misery is one of those stories where when you mention it, most people are bound to just be like, oh. <laughs> Paul Sheldon. He's a best-selling novelist who has finally met his biggest fan. Her name is Annie Wilkes, and she is more than a rabid reader. She is Paul's nurse, tending his shattered body after an automobile accident. But she is also his captor, keeping him prisoner in her isolated house. Now Annie wants Paul to write his greatest work just for her. She has a lot of ways to spur him on. One is a needle, another, is an ax. And if they don't work, she can get really nasty. Isn't this? It is! It's the one. <laughs> right. 
fuck me. That is hilarious. Anyway. So, for Carrie, this seems like it's one of those, like, dividing. You know what I mean? Like, seems like folks either get it or they don't. They either love it or they hate it. And some, some, some people make it sound like they grew up in Stars Hollow or something, which... I was always under the impression is not real, so it doesn't it doesn't exist. And I don't know if like use just luck of the draw and you know, like I I didn't really mind growing up in Seattle, it was pretty cool, but it was still like nobody's perfect, life's not perfect and shit happens, you know what I mean? Like I don't know, but when people, you know, pop off about, like, the freaking, like, locker room scene or whatever the fuck, and the bullying and the crazy mother and stuff, and then it's like the rest of us are just like, are you kidding me? Like, that shit, like, spoke to us. How did this complete stranger get in there? You know what I mean? Get into that moment in freaking stupid shit how like i don't know for some of us it just resonated some of us were bullied like motherfuckers no matter what the fuck we did as kids so or, or how many of you were the bullies so carrie a modern classic carrie introduced a distinctive new voice in american fiction stephen king the story of misunderstood high school girl Carrie White, her extraordinary telekinetic powers, and her violent rampage of revenge remains one of the most barrier-breaking and shocking novels of all time. Uh, yeah. And then we get to number five. Oh, this one. So when my cousin, uh, the one with the house from the ghost, those like, yeah, that cousin. She freaking joined the Stephen King book club, right? And Eyes of the Dragon is the first book that she got with that. And so when I borrowed that story from her, that is when someone explained to me the depth of the character Randall Flagg. And it was just like... Because by then I'd already read a lot of freaking Stephen King. So that just like blew me away so this one is kind of up there with the um pet cemetery in that it's always going to have a special spot regardless of where i place it on this list and this is like the like rpg stephen king story so if that's been your problem with stephen king books if you're more of a fantasy fan and you've yet to read the eyes of the dragon what the fuck a kingdom is in turmoil as the old king dies, murdered by a strange and horrible poison. While the land of Delane mourns, the evil wizard Flag hatches an unscrupulous plot, which sees the king's eldest son, Peter, imprisoned for his father's murder, and the youngest son inherit the throne. Only Peter knows the truth about his own innocence and the evil that is Flag. Only Peter can save Delane from the horror that Flag has in store. But first, he must escape from the high tower. <laughs> My cousin was like, I don't know if you're gonna like it. And I was like, and now it's one of my favorites. And for number six, I chose Rose Matter. So didn't this come out in like 95? Yeah, it came out in 95. Now, I want to say I've read it in like 97, maybe, give or take a year. And I feel like for me, it was just the right time. You know what I mean? The right place, the right time to read a tale like that. Is this the one where like the word Providence kept coming up? Is this that one or is that Dolores Claiborne? I think it was this one, right? Anyway, here's a synopsis. Roused by a single drop of blood, Rosie Daniels wakes up to the chilling realization that her husband is going to kill her, and she takes flight with his credit card. 
Alone in a strange city, Rosie begins to build a new life. She meets Bill Steiner, and she finds an odd junk shop painting, Rose Matter, which strangely seems to want her as much as she wants it. But it's hard for Rosie not to keep looking over her shoulder. Rose maddened and on the rampage, Norman is a corrupt cop with a dog's instinct for tracking people. And he's getting close. Rosie can feel just how close he's getting. I don't know. I liked it. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It just, it just hit me in the right spot. It just, it just, I was like, yeah, fuck him. I don't know. <laughs> Providence. I can't really explain myself. Okay. We're, we're just going to move on for number seven. Um, I decided to go ahead and we're going to begin going through specific types. I'm not going to include any collaboration. So like not sleeping beauties and shit like that. Um, just for my own sanity of doing this. Quite frankly, I'm probably gonna have to do a 2.0 at some point too, huh? So as far as like the ones that I've read, I've read different seasons, everything's eventual. Oh my God, why can't I fucking remember the name of that? There's another one. I totally read it, whatever, moving on. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't finish Skeleton Crew. I got really, ugh, I'm surprised. I was going over it. I'm surprised by how far I made it into it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna talk about it. Skeleton Crew gave me blue balls, okay? That's all it did. The entire fucking, fucking thing gave me blue balls. Every single fucking story, blue balls. <laughs> That's not going on the top 10, my friend. No, all for you. All for you. You have fun with your blue balls. Okay, <laughs> Shane. I feel like you know what I mean, though. <laughs> okay, different seasons, however, I think, in my opinion, we're all allowed to have our opinions, that uh, I think this is like the quintessential short story collection. It's got all the grades. It has freaking Shawshank. It has apt pupil. I don't know if I would necessarily call that a great, but there's a movie. I've never understood why they made a movie out of that, but it happened and for some reason lodged in there. It's just lodged in. The Body, Stand By Me is in this. It's a lot of greats. I've just been carrying the baby. I've just been carrying that one around with me for a while because it's so cute. I don't know why, I don't know. Leave me to it, okay? It's a cute little baby. Number eight. For number eight, I chose my favorite book in the Dark Tower series. I keep trying to think of how to go about this because it is Wizard and Glass but I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. And this is such a <clears throat> And there is, there is a panel from this comics. From the graphic novels that, uh, I wanted to get like tattooed down my side of her dress. That's just, ugh, ugh. It's so pretty. I love this shit. That's my favorite. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's the book where we actually get some fucking answers. Jesus Christ. Now I need a sippy poo, Randy. That's a fourth fucking book. I mean, it was worth the wait. It was good. It was really good. Oh my God. It was so good. <laughs> okay, moving on. We have hit nine and 10. Number nine is Cujo. I'm sure some are like really surprised because I can't stand it when things happen to the family pets and stuff like that. I really fucking can't, but... <sighs> Let's, let's go over the synopsis before I start yammering. Outside a peaceful town in central Maine, a monster is waiting. Cujo is a 200 pound St. Bernard, the best friend Brett Gammer has ever had, 
One day, Cujo chases a rabbit into a bolt hole, a cave inhabited by sick bats. What happens to Cujo, how he becomes a horrifying vortex, inexorably drawing in all the people around him, makes for one of the most heart-stopping novels Stephen King has written. I gave that five stars. Um, Okay, like there's really only one aspect about this one that I can go over. So if you haven't read this and you don't like spoilers or anything like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, isn't like these, I'm gonna say three main characters, right? They're all victims. All three of them, they're all three victims. Like, it's a really sad story actually. And this is like one of the like, Maybe this is up there with Lisey's story for like pulling on my heartstrings and shit like that. Or a certain part in the Dark Tower story, but we're not gonna talk about that. We're not talking about it. We're moving the fuck on. Moving on, moving on. Yeah. Like I remember being a kid and watching this movie and just like, but it wasn't even his fault. <laughs> he was just doing his thing, being a dog. And they were just doing their thing and everybody was just doing their thing, man. It was just, but that was scary. <laughs> and it's like a great example of my favorite type of horror. Nice and simple. Nice and fucking seemingly simple. I bet it was a bitch to film at times. And number 10. <gasps> is this bad boy? This is the copy I had. Originally I was reading, I think I made it almost halfway reading a digital copy and then um, my iPhone and Apple decided, no, we cannot confirm where the fuck you got that thing. So, and I was like, no. And they were like, nope, we won. <gasps> Fucking Apple. You can take it, it's fine. It's fine, this fucker's a brick, it's fine. Didn't even print a fucking page. <laughs> wow. I was like, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. It's fine. Even like these things, that's the freaking book itself. It's perfect, it's in great condition. <laughs> anyway, you might be wondering why this was so low on the list, right? Because there's things that I'm like, the fuck was that about though? What the fuck, what was that about? What was that? What was? What's that? <laughs> what is that? Things like that. I have a feeling you know damn well why I put that at number 10 and not higher up in the list. It's a fucking Stephen King classic. God damn chunky McV. But... <laughs> that didn't have as much bass as I was expecting it to. I'm kind of sad now. And there we go. There's that wrapped up nice and sweet. <sighs> that was a lot of babble. Thank you for putting up with my shit. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts on some of these. Did any of these make your list or are you like, what? No, you know you like that. Okay, maybe I like that part. Maybe I like that part. I will give you that. But what about this other fucking shit? Can you make that make? No, really. Can you make it make sense? Just, that's all. I just, just make it make sense, please. <laughs> Until next time, fam. You take care, and I will try as well.